Hello everyone, uh, it's Paddy Turner here, Director of the NADP Accreditation Task and Finish Group and this is our annual report, a whiz through what we've been doing this year. Um, first off, a, a bit of an overview uh, regarding the accreditation scheme, which is our chief um, piece of work. Uh, this is a new and enhanced scheme to better reflect our range of members, bearing in mind we had a scheme already that was running um, successfully, but with feedback that suggested we needed to make changes. So what we've done is created a new standards framework, which is built on the Advanced HE, formerly known as the HEA, Higher Education Academy, professional standards framework for higher education teaching and repurposed it for disability practitioners. practitioners. This requires members to reflect on and evidence their practice in order to meet the standards of the framework. So it's very practice based, um, which is certainly preferable for our members. Uh, and we've agreed to have two awards categories, one for accredited member and one for a senior accredited member, which was not the case before. OK, so last year I reported on how we had gone out using some roadshows to road test, if you like, the framework that we've come up with. And that was successful and we enhanced and modified that uh, according to feedback and allowed us then to move into uh, piloting of the framework. The first pilot we undertook in July, uh, we selected a range of practitioners, but those who were close to the scheme, this was important. We, um, we held two day long events where we both uh, drafted and wrote um, draft submissions, parts of submissions. We shared those, we commented on them, discussed them. Um, we evaluated them against the criteria. And the purpose of this was for us as a group to establish past levels, to test those criteria. Were they meaningful? Develop the practice of reviewers who would go forward and review the scheme once launched identify uh, the kinds of support that might be needed to um, undertake the scheme and think about what kind of mentorship might be uh, available. Uh, thereafter, we uh, developed draft, draft guidance materials, um, support mechanisms. We proposed office systems and processes, and that took us through the pro um, period from July to December. Uh, and then we were ready for pilot two, and this was to test the systems that we'd created, um, the support mechanisms that we decided we would want to put in, in, in place, guidance materials and the reviewing processes. Now, this was originally planned for January to March, but uh, for obvious reasons, which I'm sure you can guess, uh, this uh, we, 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 we did end up with a few delays and that pushed it out to May. Um, now, we were very fortunate to have 24 people apply, uh, 19 of those completed, two of those were only partial completions. Um, and although there were, there were just two or three who weren't successful immediately, our systems were and feedback mechanisms were good enough that all them passed on the second uh, resubmission. So we had 11 accredited members, six senior accredited members, and, and the two who didn't complete are still uncompleted. Um, and we were fortunate also to be able to include in that number people from different roles, different organisations, um, uh, um, assessment centres, um, suppliers, as well as your standard disability service people. And um, uh, so that was what I would consider to be a very successful programme. And we then, as a task and finish group, um, met to review and evaluate the guidance that we provided, the processes and systems that we thought we might need going forward. Um, and we took that feedback, evaluative feedback from both reviewers and applicants. And the task and finish group met in June to rummage through all that feedback and look for where we could go next. Um, so the headline actions that we still have to complete, and these are partly based on the feedback we got. And I, I should say that the feedback was excellent. The whole pilot was very heartening in the sense that um, we were quite cruel. Uh, we didn't 
we get set quite harsh deadlines, uh, which people met. And they liked the fact of having a deadline to force them to get through the process. Uh, we gave them very uh, good guidance online. Um, and uh, Lynn from the office provided a number of supporting emails and encouragements, including tips and tricks and reminders, um, all of which were hugely appreciated within that evaluation. So this will continue. But we didn't uh, give them any introductory workshops. We didn't have writing retreats or anything like that that helped them. Um, and this was deliberate to test how good the online guidance was and how much additional support people might need. In the end, this is what came back, that um, a number of um, those who participated um, felt we should have some sort of introductory guidance on a video. So we will create an, uh, and evaluate those before establishing them. Uh, just some minor adjustments we have to make to our guidance materials. Uh, we want to, the, we have some exemplars and uh, of successful submissions, and these were much appreciated. So we just want to develop and add to those exemplars. Um, slightly uh, concerning was some, co some concerns from uh, participants regarding the support from referees. You need to have referees uh, to contribute to your submission. And uh, so we, we need to do some uh, improvements to the support that referees have. Um, improve the guidance and perhaps reduce the commitment that they need to make. This is uh, separate from feedback, but we do need to create a quality assurance group or an oversight group, something along those lines. This will meet annually to review the scheme, to check on our consistency of decision making um, and to make suggestions for future improvements or adjustments that the scheme might make. And it's important that we have on that group uh, people from outside NADP as well to add some external um, uh, and objective voices to that quality assurance. We need to plan our promotion and publicity for the launch and most importantly, of course, finalise fee structure. We think we're close to that. It's going to have to be more expensive to go for senior accredited member because the burden on the office, the burden on the reviewers will be greater because they have to produce more than accredited members. Um, but we will obviously be aiming to keep those costs as low as possible, both um, because we're not in the business of making a profit and also because um, we're aware of uh, the pressure on budgets, particularly in the current climate. OK, so the good news is we we are working towards a, a, a final launch for opening up the scheme to members across the board. Uh, we think we're going to have to do it as a cohort um, based on two, two times a year. So we'll have two cohorts and we think we can manage only 25 per cohort. Now, we may be able to change that in the future, but obviously this is partly in an attempt to keep costs down. Um, we thought very hard, long and hard, about the timing of these um, uh, start and finish deadlines. In other words, w when you as practitioners are going to have the best opportunity to be able to forge some time to write your submissions or create your submissions. So this is our proposal, that these will be twice a year with a start at the beginning of January, uh, with a deadline for the end of March about 12, 13 weeks to complete. Uh, and we would expect the final outcomes of that to be produced in May. Um, so there'd be a very slight overlap with the start of the second cohort, which would be in May, running to the end of July, with results coming out in September 2021. So finally, uh, I hope you uh, are happy with that outcome. I think uh, there's been an extraordinary amount of work. I'm amazed that we've managed to keep more or less to our plan with only very little slippage. Um, and I want to thank hugely, firstly, the task and finish group members, uh, Lynn Wilson, our operations manager, who's put in a huge amount of time and effort, Caroline Huntley, 
Jennifer Harley and John Harding, who is the co-opted director, all of whom have been uh, made considerable contributions. Also, I'd like to thank the panel reviewers who will go forward to con con um, be act as reviewers in the future. Uh, also, in their own time, put in additional hours in order to support this scheme development and on into the future. It's Caroline Huntley, Jennifer Harley, Vicky Jackson, Hilary Osborne, Alison Phillips, Jonathan Thompson, Lindsay Weil, Lynn Wilson and Helen Young. And of course, uh, it wouldn't be uh, it would be remiss of me not to add my congratulations, my huge congratulations to those who have been successful through these two pilots. And, uh, you know, obviously to uh, to apologize. I don't know what I have to apologize for, but it's, it's such a shame that we we cannot honor them at our uh, annual conference as we would have liked following such um, great effort this year. Here is a list of them. You can find these people's names also listed on our NADP accreditation scheme tab on the website. So huge congratulations to all of these people. Um, Jennifer Afram, Katie Balash, Anita Cox, Becky Keane, Teresa Loftus, Alice McCann, Maeve Patton, Alison Phillips, Lynn Reagan, Jennifer Richards, Suzanne Russell, Joshua Ward, and Lindsay Weil, all of whom are newly accredited members of NADP. Congratulations and well done. And to the new senior accredited members of NADP, Ursula Bilson, Anna Bradley, Helen Duncan, John Harding, Stephen Harper, Caroline Huntley, Lorraine Ishmael Byers, Vicky Jackson, Sarah Lowndes, Hilary Osborne, Hayley Rushton Davies, Paddy Turner, that's me, Lynn Wilson, and Helen Young. Thank you very much.